In this video, we're going to talk about atomic mass. Now, sometimes people call atomic mass by other names. Your teacher might call it one of these things instead. Atomic mass is a really important characteristic for elements. Each element, like copper, oxygen, sulfur, so forth, each element has its own atomic mass. And atomic mass is this number that's written underneath the element sign on the periodic table. Now, atomic mass is an average. It's an average of the masses of a number of different atoms. But it's a special kind of average. It's a special kind of average called a weighted average. And this is different than the kind of average that you've probably already learned in math. So in order to talk about and really understand atomic mass, we first have to understand weighted averages, what they are and how to calculate them. So we're going to start out by talking about weighted average using an analogy to cars. So let's imagine that there is a type of car called the Lamona. And the Lamona is called a Lamona because it looks like a lemon. It has this very distinct shape. For the purposes in this video, we'll imagine that the Lamona comes in two models, the Lamona GX and the Lamona GXL. And these two models have different features that are unique to each one of them. The GX is blue, the GXL is red, and this one's kind of a luxury model. It's got massaging seats and platinum spinner wheels, whereas this one not only has cloth seats and cheap aluminum wheels. Either way, even though these are different models that have different features, they are both Lamonas because they have this distinct lemon-like shape. In this way, the models of the Lamona are very much like isotopes of an element. Copper, for example, comes in two models, copper 63 and copper 65. Both of these isotopes of copper have the same number of protons, 29, 29, because the atomic number of copper is 29. But they have different numbers of neutrons. So just as long as you have 29 protons, it makes you copper. It doesn't matter how many neutrons you have. Just the way that if you have the shape of a lemon, the car is a Lamona, and it doesn't matter what other features come in that car. This is all we're going to talk about with isotopes for right now, but just keep this in the back of your mind that the models of a car are very similar to isotopes of an element. Anyway, we said that atomic mass is going to have a lot to do with the idea of averages. So let's think about averages for these two cars. The Lamona GX weighs 4,000 pounds, whereas the Lamona GXL weighs 5,000 pounds. It's probably these platinum spinner wheels that really add to that heft. So let's say you have this question. What is the average weight of the two cars? Knowing what you probably already know about averages, you could do this math. You could take 4,000 pounds for the GX, add it to 5,000 pounds for the GXL, and then divide by two, because we have two things here. That would give you an average of 4,500 pounds, which gives us a number that is right between the weights of the two models. So I'm going to refer to this as a regular average. It's the kind of average that you've probably already learned how to do. Now what if I made this problem a little bit more complicated by giving you some extra information? Let's say that there aren't the same number of GX's and GXL's out there. Maybe because the GXL is a little bit more expensive, there are a lot fewer of them. So if we look at all the Lamonas that have been sold everywhere, only 5% of them are GXL's, whereas the vast majority, 95% of them, are GX's. We could show this graphically. If we were to pull 100 random Lamonas off the street, all the blues would be the GX's, whereas the ones in red show the GXL's. Obviously, there are many more, but this is 100 taken at random. And we can see the same thing on a pie chart with just 5% GXL's and the vast majority, 95%, are GX's. So there's that. Now let's take this information into account when we're asked this question. What is the average weight of Lamonas taking into account the amount 
of each model. Now we have to calculate an average that is different than the regular average that we did up here. Because in this case, we just found a number that was right between 4,000 and 5,000. But if we're taking into account the amount of each of these, is it really fair to say that the average weight is 4,500 right in the middle of these two weights? Because there are so many more of the Lamona GXs and they weigh less, we need to come up with an average that takes this into account and gives us a number that's not just right in the middle, but would be closer to this because there's so many more of them. Here's how we do it. This is where we get to the idea of the weighted average. So to calculate the weighted average, I'm going to take the amount that the Lamona GX weighs, which is 4,000 pounds, and then I'm going to multiply it by the percent abundance. Abundance is just a really fancy word that means how much of something you have. So here we have 95% of the total Lamonas are GXs. So I'm going to multiply it by the abundance of the GX. I have to turn this percentage into a decimal. So the decimal point would be here. I move it two spaces to the left. So I'm going to get 0 0.95. Now, what this expression is here is this is the contribution from the GX that I have 95% of. Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to add it to the amount that I have of the GXL. So I'm going to take its weight, which is 5,000 pounds, and multiply by its abundance, also expressed as a decimal. So again, the decimal place is here, and we'll move it two spaces to the left. So it has 0 0.05. And this right here is the GXL, which accounts for 5% of my total. I multiply these two things together, and then I do the addition, and I'm going to end up with a weighted average of 4,050 pounds. Now, as you can see, here's an average that takes into account the weights of both of these models, but it also takes into account the amount that we have of each. And so because there are so many more of the GXs, the average isn't right in the middle. The average is much closer to the weight of the GXs. And because we have very few of the GXLs, their weight doesn't have a whole lot of impact on this final average. I mean, it's higher than 4,000, but it's not right in between. And so this calculation is what we refer to as a weighted average, where we take into account the amount or the abundance of how much we have of each thing. So now that we've learned how to do weighted averages with different types of cars, Let's talk about how to do weighted averages with different isotopes of an element. So the atomic mass is a weighted average of the masses for all the isotopes of a certain element. Copper, as we said earlier, has two versions or two models, copper 63 and copper 65. Just like the Lamona, these two versions of copper, these two isotopes of copper, copper have different masses. So, the mass of copper 63 is about 63 AMU, and the mass of copper 65 is about 65 AMU. But also, just like the Lamona, we don't have the same number of copper 63 and copper 65 atoms. If we randomly pulled 100 copper atoms out of the world, we'd find that 69% of them are copper 63. Here are my 100 copper atoms, and the 63 ones are represented by blue dots. And we'd find that 31% of those are copper 65 atoms. So the point is, you pull a copper atom at random from somewhere in the world, and it can be either 63 or it can be 65. You have a 69% chance of getting copper 63, and a 31% chance of getting copper 65. 
So, to find the atomic mass, we need to do a weighted average calculation that takes into account the mass of each of these isotopes, but also their percent abundance. And here's how we're going to do it. Remember how we did it with a Lamona? What we do is we start with the mass. So, copper 63, I'll do 63 AMU. Now I multiply that by its abundance expressed as a decimal. 69%, move the decimal place two spots to the left, and I have 0.69. And this expression right here is for copper 63. Now I'm going to add that to copper 65. I'm going to do 65 AMU times its abundance, 0.31, expressed as a decimal. And just to keep track of this, I'll put copper 65 here. Now the math really isn't that hard. It's just setting it up that's tricky. You multiply this, multiply this, add them together, and I'm going to get 63.62 AMU. Now look at this, 63 and 65. If we did a regular average, we would come up with a number that was right in the middle, 64, okay? But there are a lot more of the 63s. So that's going to mean that our weighted average isn't going to be right in the middle. It's going to be closer to 63. And that's exactly what we see. We see a weighted average that is not 64, but is down closer to 63 because we have more of these. And the heavier copper 65s, they're not contributing as much to this weighted average. Now, I told you that this number here on the periodic table represents the atomic mass. You might be wondering why the atomic mass that I calculated here came out to 63.62 and not to the 0.55 that I see here. Well, the reason is because I took some shortcuts here. I used cleaner numbers so that it didn't confuse you as much when we were doing the calculations for the first time. It turns out that copper 63 doesn't really weigh exactly 63 AMU, but it's actually 62.93. It's also not 69% abundant, but it's 69.17 abundant. So there are just some extra decimals on the end that I chose to leave off for these calculations because they're kind of a pain. The same is true of 65, where the numbers aren't the perfectly nice, even ones that I used for this problem. But the point is, when you do take these numbers into account and you do the weighted average calculation, you end up with an atomic mass in AMU that is exactly the same as what you find on the periodic table. So now that you understand what a weighted average is, how to calculate it, and how to work through atomic mass, you're ready to check out the practice problems on this topic in other videos.